Math is fun, guys. So is the name Wagner. It is great. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Wagner want a family picture taken. Want? Yep, that's what I just said. Want? Family picture taken with their children, Jeremy, Jesse, and Crystal. Poor Jamie, he didn't make it. In the mix. Um, and I didn't realize, because they're my brothers, I didn't realize that people would be like, is Jesse a girl or a boy? And then Jamie, they're be like, is that a girl or a boy? I didn't realize people were going to ask that, because they're my brothers and I know their boys. So, fun fact, Jeremy and Jesse are boys. Okay, um, in how many different ways can all five line up in a straight line for a picture if there are no restrictions? Now, I love when the people go five, 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 five. It's like, hello, we get someone here, and then, oh, we don't, and then we get here, and then we take one away, and then we stay here. You're never lining anyone up. You don't leave someone behind, right? Like, you're legitimately, like, just, you just viciously be taking the person standing there and then taking them back up. So, this is five people, and then we leave someone here. We're going to leave Crystal here, because she's the most important. And then, the next one is how many? Four. And then we can leave Mama Wags. That's what we can leave. Mr. Hassett calls my mom Mama Wags. And then, oh, okay. Three, two, one, you're welcome. Okay, what's the answer? Ooh, what can we split this at? Five factorial, which is 120. Parents must be on either end. Two, one, three, two, one. 12. Great answers. Box your answers. Be loud and proud. Baby Crystal must be in the middle, which my brothers always referred to me as in not nice way. Oh, little baby, just have you get away with everything, you know? You know? And if I did, it sucks to be you. That's what I think. One of me. Then what do we have here? Four, three, two, one, which is how many? 24. Okay. Shh. The children alternate with the adults. What do we have to start with? I was going for a child, but yep, three. Child, yep, and then two, because we have to go with the adult. And then two, because we have to go with the other child. Then one, because we have to go with the adult. And then on the leftover child, the least liked one. 14. Oh boy, oh boy. It's just four times three. Okay. Right. So here we have, there are three boys and three girls in a mixed volleyball team. They want to take a picture of their team for the season where boys and girls alternate. You will probably have this wrong. I can set you up. If you did get it wrong, start. So how many of you start off with boys? How many of you start off with girls? You have to start off with a boy or a girl. I don't know why no one's putting their hands up. Like literally. Okay, put your hand up if you started with a boy. If you didn't do the question, pick one. Put your hand up if you started with a girl. Does it make a difference? Can you tell the difference in a picture if on this side there's a girl and then I re-give you a new picture and there's actually a boy on the far left? Could you, if I handed you the picture, would you be like, oh, those are exactly the same? Or would you say, no, those look different? Oh shoot, there's two cases, yes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We can start with a boy. Or we could start with a girl. So, so we can start with a boy or we can start with a girl. So here we would have three, two, one. And then we would have three, two, one for the girls which is six times six, which is 36. And then here we have three, two, one for the girls, and then three, two, one for the boys, which is 36. Yes. And you add them, 72. All right. So in a picture, you can tell if it's the left side was a boy or the left side was a girl, so you're gonna get two different cases. This only happens when you have an even number of each. So if you look up here where I made the children and the adults alternate, there was only one case because I had to start off with a child, child in order for them to alternate. If I started off with an adult, I would get adult, child, adult, child, child. They wouldn't alternate, correct? So if there's an odd number, if they're not the same, 
If one is like two and one is three, you only get one case. But when they're three and three, you can get two cases. All right, so here we're going to talk. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in a definitive order. So order matters is something in the permutation. That's very important. Permutations, order matters. So actually combination locks should be called permutation locks. Because if you put the three numbers in in a different order, are you getting in? No. So combinations order doesn't matter. Permutations order matters. So what about a cell phone number? Does the order in which you put it in matter? Yeah. Yes. What about the pin for your credit card or debit card? The pin matters, right? If you put it in a different way. What about the pin to a uh, door lock? Yes. Uh, what about a license plate? Does the order matter or can I take those letters and numbers and switch them around? It's the same as your license plate. No. So permutations are when order matters. Standing someone in a picture, yeah. does the order matter? Does the picture look different if I move those people? Yes. Putting posters on a wall, order matters. So I'm physically, I can tell the difference when I look at it. Okay? So here we have a permutation is an arrangement of objects in a definitive order. Order matters. With each object appearing only once in each arrangement. For example, ordering three stuffies. A kitty, a bunny, and a puppy. So let's, like, let's, we're going to order them. I don't know why I already have a P there. Cool. Um, we're going to order them. Do you guys have a P there? No. Interesting. It actually does work. There is a thing with a P. But, um, we're going to order them around, and we're going to order them in a way so that they look different, right? If I, if I line the stuffies up in front of your face, and I move them, it looks different, correct? So I could go kitten, uh, bunny, puppy. I could go bunny, kitten, Puppy, I don't believe that because I have a P there. What else could I do? Puppy. puppy, bunny, kitten, puppy, kitten, bunny. What else could I do? Kitten, puppy, bunny. And then, bunny, puppy, kitten. And they would look all different, correct? So there's three different, there's, sorry, six different ways I could do that with the three objects. But we could also use the fundamental counting principle to show that as well. This is spot one where I'm going to put one stuffy, one stuffy, remember, one stuffy, that's what it was in those lines. How many stuffies would I have for this first leg? How many stuffies would I have for this first leg? How many options? Three. Three. I have three, right? Now I'm arranging these objects on a table, just like I'm arranging textbooks in a bookshelf. I have to leave one behind, just like arranging people in a picture, right? So it would be three then, Eight. then what? Two. Two then, Four. one, which is six. Same answer. Okay? Then we're going to flip over. Okay, we have talked about how to type these in. I'm not going to worry about that. We've talked about it. What we're going to do is go here to the next page. We're shooting ahead. Look past the page. It will be fine. Yeah, you've never even seen it. You just said just chillax. I won't let you not understand. Okay, I promise. All right. The number of permutations from a set of n different objects where r of them are used in each arrangement can be calculated using this formula. The formula is on your formula sheet. Um, so, if I did 8p3, we could fill it into this formula. The formula is npr equals n factorial over n minus r factorial. You don't have to rewrite it. I have to, but yours is at the very top of your page, which you can blatantly see. I just can't because I scroll past it. But if you want to write it, you can. So, what this means is this is n, and this is r. Do you agree? Because the formula states it. So we are going to go 8p3 equals um, 8 factorial 
over uh, 8 minus 3 factorial. Now, we have to be able to do, the, our calculator is a button with a P and we'll be able to do this, but we have to be able to do it algebraically and show with our uh, formula as well. So we're going to go 8 factorial divided by, what's 8 minus 3? 8 5. 5 factorial. So go to your calculator and go 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial. Everyone trying it out. What do we get for an answer? Okay. I want to show you something else. Are you all paying attention? Every single person should have their calculator in the hand. So now we're going to type this in. Okay. So it's going to be in the same spot. So we're going to go to the same spot, and we're going to go 8. We're going to press 8, and then the math button again, over to probability. And which one has it? Which one do you think we're going to pick? 2. 2. And then you're going to hit 3. And what do we get? 336. So you do 8, math over to probability, and instead of picking number four, which is the factorial, you're going to pick number two. And then three, enter. Now, I want to explain how this formula can also be, uh, uh, fundamental accounting principle can also be used. So 8P3 can be the fundamental accounting principle. It means I start at the number eight, Anyway, I started the number 8 three times. So this here tells me um, if I do 8P3, this is the starting number. This only works for permutations, the P. And this is how many blanks. So I have one, two, three blanks. And what number am I going to start with? What number am I going to start with? Eight. And then you have to go down by one each time. So eight then, seven then, six. Times that out. Thirty-six. So the permutation formula only works if you're not repeating objects, right? I went from 8, I held 1, 7, held 1, 6. We agree? So if you're not repeating objects, we can use the P formula. So here I have 6P5. Can everyone type that into their calculator and give me an answer? 6P5. Now... This means I start with 6, but how many blanks do I have? 5. So this is start, number, blank. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what number do I start with? 6, six 5, 4, 3, 2, 
Now, guys, if I tell you, I give you the answer. If I gave you the answer 6P5 and I said, give me a scenario that that works for using posters, different posters, what could the question could be, what could you make the question be that would get you an answer of 6P5 or which is 6 plus 5 is 43 times 2? If I said six different posters is what you could use. Anyone know? How many posters are you putting on the wall? How many posters are you putting on the wall? Five. Out of how many posters? Six. six. So what you could say is, determine, um, given six different posters and five spots on your wall to place the posters, how many different ways could that happen? Right? So I have five different spots on my wall. Boom, 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 boom. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Or I have six different math textbooks, and I want to place five of them on a shelf. Arrange five of them on a shelf. Because arrange means order matters. You're arranging them, right? So that could be an example. So on a test, you could be given an answer and asked to make your own scenario of what that answer could be. Right? So you can work backwards, too, not just always forwards. All right. Here we have Isla, not Lila. Stupid font. Isla has downloaded 10 new songs from an online music store. She wants to create a playlist using six of these songs arranged in any order. So if I'm arranging them, I can use blanks, correct? Because if I'm arranging them, this blank has to have something, then this one, this one, this one, this one. So if I'm arranging them, I can use the fundamental counting principle, which is those blanks. So Isla has downloaded 10 new songs. She has 10 to choose from on an online music store. She wants to create a playlist of six arranged in any order. So they're still being arranged. And do playlists matter? The order of a playlist? If you say it doesn't and you want the 10th song and you have to go search for it, order does matter, doesn't it? The only time a playlist doesn't matter is if you put it on what? Shuffle. Is this on shuffle? No, so order matters. So I'm arranging how many songs? Six. One. First on the playlist. Second on the playlist. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth on the playlist. We agree? Is that true? Now, how many options do I have for the first song on the playlist? Ten. Okay, then? Then how many? Nine. I thought I heard someone say seven. It scared me a little. Then? Eight. Why are we dropping one off each time? Because you're not going to have a playlist of the same song over and over and over and over and over. Right? And it says using six of these songs, not using one song six times. Okay? Now, what's a fast way to type this into your calculator? You could go 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. But what did I tell you? When you go down by one each time, 10 can be the starting number, right? P what? Six. These will actually result in the exact same answer. So sometimes the answer is 10P6 in a multiple choice answer. Sometimes the answer is A, P, B, determine A, B respectively, which would mean you'd have to go 106 in your numeric response boxes. So you need to know how to do the P's as well, not just the blanks. So what is the actual answer to this? I really was not listening. 151,200. All right. Nine girls are available to fill three positions on a hockey team. Center, winger, and defense. Does order matter if you're getting a position? Yes. If your defense, you really don't want to be a forward. Okay? This is also not how you would slot a hockey team. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. You just, like, they're not an even amount of people for all the different But whatever. If you give someone positions, order matters. If all girls are equally competent in each position, which is not usually the case, how many different ways can the positions be filled? So how many blanks do we have? Three. We have center, winger, defense. How many can go on the first blank? Nine. Then? Eight. Because the person can't be both. Then? Seven. Now how could I write this with a P? Nine, that's the number I'm starting with. P, how many blanks? Three. And what do you get? 
Remember, written response on the test would be the sentence, right? We need sentences for all of this. And you would just, this, uh, this is where I shone with my English, because you literally just rewrite the sentence. You'd say, if all girls were equally competent in each position, then there would be 504 different ways positions could be filled. Yeah. 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 So then what's like the um, other um, Sorry, I'm not sure. Like the N over like N minus all. That's just using the actual formula. So your calculator is doing the formula in itself. So if I asked for you to do it algebraically, you could show me with the calculator. You could show me with the formula. Yeah. All right. At a used car lot, seven different car models. This is very this is very important. Seven different car models. Can if they're all okay, think about this. Seven different car models. If they're all painted the exact same black, can you tell them apart? Seven different car models. So like a Ford Focus could be beside a van. They're exactly the same black. So blatantly obvious, you cannot tell them. No, you, you can tell them apart, right? They're different models, okay? It makes a difference. If it says the same model, you can't tell them apart, and that's repetition. Okay, very different. So here it says seven different models. So that means they all look different. Are parked close to the street for easy viewing. The three red cars must be parked so that uh, there is a red car at each end. And the third red car has to be in the middle. How many ways can the seven cars be parked? Okay, let's not overthink this. How many blanks? Are, is this a permutation? Can you like can you order? Are we ordering the cars in, in view that they look different? Yes, we're putting we're arranging them in car spots, correct? So we're arranging them in the permutation. Cool. Sometimes you're not going to use the P. The P only works. If and only if you start at a number, go down by one to enough to end at another number, right? If we have like this number, eight, then three, two, seven, five, six, you can't use P anymore. Okay? You just have to use one of those kind of types. How many cars are we lining up? How many cars? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, not one. Okay, we have to start with restrictions first. There's three red cars. One has to be on one end, one on the other end, one in the middle. So that's what we have to deal with first, correct? So how many options do I have for this one if I just start here? Three. What do I have to remember that I just did now, though? I parked it. Parked one of the red cars. Can you agree? Now I'm going to go to the middle or the end. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go to the other end. It just says at each end and then the middle. So that's what I did. How many cars, red cars do I have for here? Two. Two. Okay, and now I've parked one. How many red cars do I have for the middle? One. Okay. Now, <laughs> when I'm in the high school, I'd be like, okay, I parked, I parked six cars. Because I didn't realize at the top was the options, not how many I parked. I didn't stack three cars on top of each other. <clears throat> Maybe like that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, that's what I did. And if, or some of you were like, man, I'm parking three cars there too. No, you're not. You're, you have three cars, but you parked one, right? Remember the blank means I parked one. This is how many options I have, right? So uh, how many cars have I actually parked? Three. One here, one here, one here. I have parked three out of how many cars? Seven. How many cars do I have left? Four. So I can start in any blank. I like going sequentially if there's no actual other thing. I like starting from left to right. So how many cars do I have for here? Four. Four then? Three. Three then? Then? Now, guys, I could type this in as... 3 times 4 times 3 times 1 times 2 times 1 times 2. But what I did is I made them in different colors. Do you see that? So what is 3 times 2 times 1 the same as? 3 factorial. 3, 2, 1, blast off, correct? Right? 3 times 2 times 1 is 3 factorial. We agree? And then we have in the blue... 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, what is that? So the answer could just be that, 2 as well, right? So what do you get for an answer? I think it's 144. 
Okay, everyone, grab a thinking cap. Put it up. All right, we're ready. I only have one person put on their thinking cap. The rest of you were disaster. Let's put on our thinking caps, everyone. Come on. Thank you. There. You got yours on now, too. You didn't want to, but she put it on for you, so now you're right. Okay, good. This is not a hard question, but I might lose some of you. So please put down your pencils. Put down anything of distraction. Because if you get this right now in this very moment, you will get it for the rest of the unit and find this really easy. If you don't right now, you will be a lost little soul. So if you have any distractions, like a phone or something, put it somewhere where it will not be near you. Okay? All right. So this one says, the three red cars must be parked side by side. Does it say they have to be parked at the left or the right or in the middle? Or does it just say they have to be parked together, technically? Parked together. Can we agree? Okay. So start side by side is the same as saying together. So if I have to have some cars parked together, I'm going to have to do this rule. Same steps every single time. Um, how many ways can seven cars be parked? I'm still parking seven. We agree? So I'm still going to have how many blanks? Seven. One, two, three, four. Don't write anything. You'll see it at the end. Five, six, seven. We're not literally writing anything. We are having our pencils down. As much as you want to write stuff, please don't. Okay? We have to have the three together. We agree? So I do this this way. I will hook the three together at the very front. You are not writing anything. You are as much as it wants you. Please don't write anything. Okay? Because you'll look down and then you'll lose where I'm at. So I need to park those three cars. I'm hooking them together so that I'm forcing them to be stuck together. Do you agree? Okay. Now I have three, two, one for those three red cars. We agree? How many are left to be parked? Four. So I have four, three, two, one. Do we agree? Yeah. Okay, this is why you're not writing anything. So I want to show you that. So we have this. We have three, two, one. One, four, three, two, one. This is the other cars parked. Yes? And that's one way I can park them where they're together. Correct? What if I took these ones and I moved them between these two cars? Would it look different? It would look different, wouldn't it? So that would look, do not write this because I'm not going to, you will never do all this. Or I could do, okay, I take the four car. And then I park the three, two, ones. And then I have three, two, one. We agree? And it would look different. Yes? Could I take those three and put them between the three, two? And it would look different. Yeah. So I could have four, four, three. I could park them. Three, two, one. And then I would have two, one. Correct? Could I put them between the two, one? Yeah, so I would have four, four, three. We will never do it this way because it takes aggressively long. Three, two, one, times one. Or could I put them at the very back? Four, three, two, one, three, two, one. Now, guys, if I go three times, three times two times one times four times three times two times one. Or four times three times two times one times three times, do I get a different answer? They're all the same answer, right? Because you're just multiplying, and then you multiply, it doesn't matter the order, as long as the same numbers, right? So, what's 24 times six? You're shaking the answer before, but I'm What's 24 times six? 144. 144, same answer as before, correct? So I go 144 plus 144 plus 144 plus 144 plus 144. Or I could go 144 times 5 because there are five cases of 144 being the exact same. Do we agree? We're never going to show it this way. We're going to show it this way. Don't pick up your pencils or anything. You see what I'm saying. Okay. So we need to figure out how many cases without having to write them all out because that would take forever, correct? So there's one case where they're all sitting at the front. 
We agree? This is my one case, the current case. Then I can move them where? Behind the four and in front of the three. So that's how many cases? Two. Or I can move them between these two. So that's three. Or I can move them four. Or I can move them at the very back. So that's why I'm multiplying by five, because there are five cases. Cool fun fact. There are always one more case than the number after the hooked together numbers. So you see how this is a four? That means there'll be five cases. So it's one more than the number after the hook together. Now this is going to be the mind-blowing part. We can write this as 3 factorial because of this. And then we can write this part as what? 5 factorial. Why? Because the commutative property of multiplication means I can move anything around. Correct? So 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 5 could be rewritten as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 blast off. So that's why I can write it as 5 factorial. And that's why it's 720. Okay, you write it down. So here we have a social insurance number, SIN, in Canada consists of nine, a nine digit number. That's important. That uses the digit 0 to 9. If there are no restrictions on the digits, that means that zero, it could start off with a zero, right? Your sin number could actually be zero, 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 zero. It'll be the worst sin someone has your identity. Like, that's what's happening. But it could be. Um, if there are no restrictions on the digits selected for each position in the number, how many sins can be created if each digit can be repeated? And then, so we'll do that one first. If each digit can be repeated, we how many blanks will we have? Carter, what's up? How many blanks do we have? Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll repeat what I wrote. Red. A social insurance number, SIN, in Canada consists of a nine-digit number that uses the digits zero to nine. If there are no restrictions on the digits, means they can be anywhere, selected for each position in the number, how many SINs can be created if each digit can be repeated? So what would be my first option? I, don't, I can start anywhere. There's no restrictions. What could it be here? Yeah, zero to nine, which is? 10. And then what about the rest? Two. 0 to 9. So it'd be 10. My just conform. They would each be 10, right? Because there's no restriction. And anything can be anywhere, and we can repeat. So this equals 1 with 9 zeros. Which is what number? One billion. True that. Then there's a new question. How does this compare with the number of sins that be can be created if no repetition is allowed? So I'm not allowed to repeat anymore, which means I have to do what? But if I can't repeat, what do I have to do? Box and hold. And it must start with a six. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have to start in the first blank because it has to be a 6, which is how many options? 1, and then I have to remember to box and hold it, correct? So I have 0 to 5, 7 to 9, which is how many options? Close. 3 to 5, 7 to 9. So remember we have 10. We just took away 1. We're holding the 6. We have normally 0 to 9, which is 10 digits. Correct? So how many do we have left? 9. And we box and hold one of them. So then we'll have 8, then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. What can I make this be so I don't have to go 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 9? 9 factorial. Now, guys, what if there isn't a 1? Can I still use 9 factorial? Could I actually? Is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 the same as 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1? Multiplying by 1, does it do anything? No. So the only way you can still use factorial is if the 1 is missing only. Because multiplying by 1 or not multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. 
So we get 9 times 20. Anyone get that number? Um, 880. Okay, we'll do one of these together and then you guys are going to try this out. So, um, for number one, it says determine the number of arrangements of the given letters, two letters from golden. Now you have to check, does golden have any doubling or tripling letters? Are they all different? Yeah. Tomorrow they won't be. They'll have some repetition, but for today, enjoy it. Uh, golden has how many letters? Six. Okay, we're choosing how many? Two. How many blanks are we going to have? Two. What are we going to start with? How many letters? Six. Then? Five, because we always box and hold when it's letters, correct? Can I write this with a P? What number am I starting with? Six. Am I going down by one each time? Yes. How many blanks are there? Two. Two. Both of these would give me 30. I want you to do B, C, D. See how you do. We have three letters from chapters. Chapters is how many letters? Eight. Eight. Are they all different? Yes, that will matter after today. So I have eight for this one, then seven, then six. How can I represent it as a P? Eight. P, how many blanks? Three. And the reason why is it has to go down by one each time, correct? If it goes down by more than one, you can't use a P, it's just three. What do we get for an answer? Three, three, three six. And then this one has four letters in well. Well has six letters, they're all different. So I have six, then five, four, Three, which can be represented as six, because that's the number I start with. P, how many blanks? And what's our answer? And then one letter from value. How many? Five. Now, I could actually represent this as a P. It would be five. Start with five, and I pick how many? One. So, 